Okay, so here we have my latest project. This is my uh, full face helmet. It is uh, just a cheap £40 effort. I've had it a year. It's beginning to look a little bit scratched and damaged and ugly looking. And it's silver. And of course my ninja being green and black. I'm looking for a helmet to match it. I've been online and now unless I'm prepared to spend £350 on a Kawasaki one there's nothing really out there that really suits the job. So what we're going to do is respray this one. Now people say that you shouldn't respray helmets and I totally agree if you don't know what you're doing. What I mean by that is if you actually look at this coating here it's actually a gloss coating and therefore it was solvent based by the manufacturer it needs to be solvent based not water based because of course in the rain it would just all dissolve and run away like matte emulsion or something so how did they do it? well first obviously they didn't put the polystyrene part of the job until after they would painted it this is the reason why you should not paint helmets if you don't know what you're doing is the polystyrene part. The polystyrene part is the thick layer of padding about an inch thick underneath the ABS plastic layer and then they then cover that with the liner. Now if paint gets on polystyrene it will just eat it away, it just vaporizes to nothing. Okay, And not just the paint itself but just the vapors of the paint and also the bonding, the glue between the polystyrene and the ABS plastic would also become compromised. Now let's talk about the solvent. Now solvent cannot go through the plastic so it won't eat all the way through. It will eat just slightly into the top surface, make it sticky for the next layer to stick to. That's how it works. So obviously as long as you cover up every single hole and don't let none of the solvents even near the polystyrene section you should be okay. I'm just going to show you now exactly what happens to polystyrene if you do put solvent near it. Hold on. Okay, so here we have a piece of polystyrene and a can of spray paint. I'm just going to give it a quick shake. In fact, we'll use black so you can see it better. Just gonna spray a little paint. Now if you look, you can actually see already bubbling away. It's just literally eating. Literally eating away at this polystyrene. And as you can see, it's just turned it to nothing. There's now holes and dents and just totally lots of material missing from the polystyrene. So, this is the reason why you shouldn't paint your own helmet if you don't know what you're doing. Okay? but watch this okay so there we have a piece of masking paper and some masking tape what can that do well if we take the masking paper place it onto the on the styrene and just stick it down now we'll run the can of paint over it once more leave that for a minute to dry so hold the line okay so you can see I've totally soaked the paper on the outside and the tape and of course it's crossed over onto the polystyrene that's exposed and you can quite clearly see that it's totally eroded that away in places forming little cracks and crevices and valleys okay so let's have a look underneath the tape let me just put the camera down okay so what you can see there simple 
although the paper on the outside is totally soaking wet with paint, solvent and the tape it doesn't penetrate it cannot penetrate through, but through this layer this simple barrier provided you put it in all the right places is all you're going to need you must protect your polystyrene from fumes and direct contact with the paint so that's the skill involved masking okay right we've removed all the inside trims the visor the mechanisms on the side and look at this bonus all the polystyrene is not glued in it's just simply push fit together very very tightly inside this bonus for me makes life really really simple because without the polystyrene in there all I've got is an empty shell I have absolutely no fear now whatsoever of solvent damage to my helmet once I've repainted this baby and it goes back together I'm safe in the knowledge this helmet is as good as it was safety wise I've actually had a chance to actually physically inspect for tiny hairline cracks after it's one year of use and it looks fine so yes looking forward to the project right so we'll take all these and we'll bag them up so they can't get no fumes latent fumes from out the room even anything it's just all going to be I'm even going to wash that I think and give it a bit of a clean some soap powder, bowl of water ok right so let's get to the next stage which is the surface of this surface is glossy now if you try and stick more paint to a glossy surface it will just peel off ok so we need to etch this surface and also there are bumps in it where there are scratches you can feel them so that's the first thing we need to flatten it but we don't want to remove all of the paint because this paint once it's been keyed is a good barrier for the new paint I'm putting on top to penetrate into the layers underneath because this is clear gloss acrylic or maybe even two paint possibly okay so the first stage is to just sand down all the key areas okay I love that rubber seal it's got to come off but it's the gluing it back on I'm concerned with okay right let's go okay right so now we have completely stripped down the helmet removed everything that sits on the top all the grills, vents everything, the only thing I can't get off is that river to strip so I'm not even going to attempt that that stain as it is I just put some tape, masking tape around all that and this is now ready for sanding and painting ok so let's go ok completely covered the area in which I intend to spray just to protect the surface simply because it's much easier to do this it took me five minutes than it would take a couple of hours to scrub with a scouring pad or the excess paint residue and that's only over spray if you actually layered a paint on there you would actually need solvents to remove it so this is much quicker just prepare the area so you don't get no over spray on anything in your kitchen okay so the helmet now is masked off ready the strap and as you can see I've now gone round it and I've flattened every single high spot label you can't feel them anymore all the stickers at the back all smooth and of course there is no gloss left it's all matte kind of surfacing also the trims they have been sanded ready to go so basically now we are ready to paint okay when you do apply paint shake the can for about 
two minutes with the ball making a noise. So obviously when you first start shaking, you won't actually hear the ball, it, but as you start to then shake it, it then becomes free from all the debris in the bottom of the paint can. So obviously that then agitates and creates a nice even consistency. Two minutes shaking the can. And when you come to spray, you spray around about eight to 12 inches away from the work. And you don't wanna put it on too wet, otherwise it will run and sag. With cans, you have the ability to just press and release the trigger and just put on a small amount of paint. When you're painting straight panels, you want to paint in straight lines and overlap the previous line by half to keep a wet edge as you go down the surface. So you like go across from left to right, down, overlap halfway, from right to left, down, overlap halfway, and so on. And then you'd go up and down as well, so you'd actually get a full even coverage on a panel. But with a round surface, like a helmet, you want to use your skill in just putting your paint on in little bits until you've got paint everywhere. Now you don't want to put it on so thick that it creates sags, and which I've got one just there. <laughs> um, right, so the beauty of this filler, uh, sorry, primer, is that it acts like a slight filler as well. So as you can actually see the label there is poking through. When I put enough of this primer on and then sand it, that'll have disappeared. Okay, and scratches like that, it will fill them in for you. Okay, so that's why I've used primer because I didn't need to. The actual paint I've chosen, the black, is it says it can go straight onto any surface, including basically the substrate that I've got, which is a glossed, previously painted surface been sanded so this is all good right okay so the uh, primer is now dry and I'm now going to use some P1200 very very smooth paper to flatten the primer I've just put on this will now remove all the high parts from where the sticker was or so any dents scratches this will now level it all up without removing the actual paint I've just put on. Okay, white primer on all the plastic bits. These are now going to get fluorescent green paint and then glow in the dark paint. The lid has now got a coat, its first single coat of satin black. It's currently wet so I can't pick it up and show you. Okay, we had a slight problem with the glue from one of the old stickers started to cause the paint to wrinkle and bubble up in a couple of places so we had to sand it and completely remove the label it's all been blended and feather edged into the surrounding area though and the entire surface has been 600 and 1200 gritted so I've just got to touch up those two areas and that's the end three areas and that's the end of the base colour ready to move on to the the artwork and then finally the gloss and of course the stickers okay just to update you so far what we've done we've managed to get the helmet completely black we've also sprayed the trims with white primer then fluorescent green paint and then on top of that we got the airbrush out with some propellant for today I'm going to get the compressor on it tomorrow because that's gone already and I've only used a little bit and we've mixed some glow in the dark paint with a drop of water to make it thin enough to spray on the top of them at the moment they're in the drying stage it's water based it takes an hour between coats but also look at this we managed to get from eBay some stickers Urban Ninja <laughs> love it Okay, so we have the helmet all masked up, except for a little tiny hole at the back. They've now had a second coat on the glow paint. Okay, moving on, we've now sprayed all the uh, glow in the dark paint onto the green trim. We've also added uh, clear lacquer, um, we're up to about three coats on that so far. It's starting to actually shine. And look at this little baby. 
I basically sprayed a white base, then a very thin dusting of green, then glow in the dark paint, very thick coat of that, and then I took a fine tip paintbrush and took some of the gloss black, sprayed it into a jar, and then dipped my brush into it and used it and did that freehand. It's not absolutely perfect, but from this distance it looks okay so from the distance people are going to see it I'm quite happy with that okay okay when we took off the masking there was a horrible nasty ridge because the surface of the back of the helmet was curved and I dried that with that a face uppermost all the paint ran to the edges of the masking and left a, like a rim I had to scrape that off with my nail and it was like a like a like a jellyish sort of sensation and it left bowl patches so I then touched in with a brush went all the way around the edge of the face to make it look a little bit neat there's a tiny area there where I bodged slightly but it's not too bad okay, I quite like that ok we've got some gloss on now it's covered over the stickers nicely and basically on those that's. I've got to go out and get one more can because it's only had like one and a half coats on the helmet, about three coats on there. I'd like to have about three and a half, four coats on each due to the fact that because the stickers are raised away from the surface of the helmet, obviously I want to build over that so that when I come to do some polishing later, because when you look at the surface it looks like an orange peel texture. That's because rain, paint comes out of a gun in round balls and lands on top of each other, creating like a cross section of hills and valleys so when you finish you take a, a flat piece of very fine sandpaper like 1200 or even 1500 or 2000 even and then you just simply flatten all the, the hills so that it's just an entire flat surface of pure valleys if you like and then once it's flat you then use something like a tea cut or a rubbing compound to bring, remove the scratches of the 1200 grit paper and that then produces the shine that you see like on car car paint jobs etc of a smooth flat surface as opposed to the orange peel surface how it comes out of the gun okay so that's everything just one more can of gloss leave it to dry a couple of days flat it polish it put it all back together and obviously put back the pirate polystyrene once all the fumes have completely and utterly evaporated and that's the finished article next shot I show you will be me wearing it Okay, now I did say to you the next time I'd be talking and I'd be wearing the helmet, but I just thought I'd let you know a little tip that I've learnt over the years. Now, you see this last final coat of gloss that I'm showing you now? It's more flatter. There's less orange peel. The reason for that is because I sprayed it very, very wet. I wouldn't be surprised if there are a couple of runs in that. However, I did say earlier on you don't want to get any runs, perhaps not so in your base colours but on your gloss it doesn't really matter because you can always flat them out. So to give yourself a nice gloss on the last coat and it will save you a lot of polishing and flatting time if you, get, if you do this, spray it a little bit wetter and as you can see, I'm just going to turn the light off now because I've got the uh, UVs on it. And as you can see, if I turn the UV off, there we go. Doesn't look very bright, does it? But trust me, it's glowing. I'm not going to start off by saying OK because I've become aware that each clip I say OK and I've joined the whole film together and therefore there's about eight or nine times where I suddenly go OK however yes this is a new clip the reason it didn't glow up very much earlier is because I'd only just put the black light onto it and therefore it didn't have enough charge because glow in the, glow, glow in the dark paint needs a charge now normally it gets that from daylight so as the evening sets in, the glow would be there, already charged. The glow time on it is obviously residual, it gradually fades as the night goes on. Glowing for up to 10 visible hours to the human eye in, if it was in a dark enough place. So, we've got some good paint. I'll give it about a 15 minute charge with a UV light 
at a distance of about six inches amongst all the trims. I'm going to turn off the light now just to show you the UV effect. So that's the UV effect of everything. Now I'm going to turn off the UV. And as you can see, it's all still glowing. Now this camera is not picking it up anywhere near as well as what my eyes are seeing this. I'm not joking you. It's like when you put your digital watch right up to the light bulb when you was a kid and then you dived under the covers with the light off quickly. It was that bright. It's that bright to me, up to my eyes. This camera is just not picking it up. I mean you can't even see that trim that I'm pointing it at. But trust me, that is a glowing bright. the video I'm making so far. It's good, it's very educational, it's very tutorial. I'm actually quite a good teacher I believe based on what I've shown you so far. But it's just far too serious man. So I just thought I'd try it on for size. Yeah, okay, so the next stage I'm at, now we've got all the gloss in place, is it's, it's got that orange peel roughness to the surface. Um, so we want to flat it out, and we're going to use some 1200 grit, very smooth sandpaper. Now this is the roughest of the smooth grits I ever use, there's, there's 1500 to 2000, 2500, even 3000 grit papers. but this one is quite rough so it takes a bulk of the material away because obviously I'm trying to flatten it you use the other grits for like removing the big scratches that this causes to create smaller scratches and then smaller scratches, smaller scratches until eventually you can't see the scratches in what appears to the human eye as a, a glossy surface is actually made up of minute vi invisible scratches if you was to look at it under a microscope but the human eye can't detect them so that's how polishing works now at the minute they feel rough, they've got a bit of a dull luster to them, they don't seem to reflect the light back because it's being diffused into all different directions. So by flattening it, you get that gloss look that we're looking for. To do this, you could just do it dry and you'd see the results as you go. You'll actually see the tops of the, the high spots disappearing because they become like a, a cloudy white colour. And then as you progress down until it's an even white colour, then you've got it flat. That's how you would you could do it. However, the problem with that is that the dust that goes on there then clogs up in between the grain of the paper. So to prevent clogging, you use water. This will allow the particles to flow away and keep the paper uh, free of debris. And of course, because paper's harder than the plastic and the paint, this of course shouldn't wear out if you use the water. I've also added a little bit of soap because two reasons. One, soap helps it more slippy, so therefore it helps provide more, again, clearing of the anti-clog, basically, uh, there. And also because soap is a detergent, which means it removes grease as well. So when you come to put on paint, with, by having a detergent solution, especially in the preparing to paint stages, having it detergent washed at the same time means you've removed all the grease so that the paint will stick onto it better. If you have a grease spot and you put on paint, the paint reveals away from the from the little dirt spot in the middle creating what's called a fish eye. Um, so to prevent that kind of thing you add a little bit of detergent to your sandpaper, uh, to your sanding water. Now I didn't show you any sanding earlier in the prepping stages but the technique is pretty much the same. In a flat panel you would like to ideally wrap your paper around an object that's 
flat so when you rub it keeps it even so any high spots will go keeping it flat 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 the more you do that the more like a mirror the finish will be if you use a solid flat object with a curved surface I'm going to fold the paper over a couple of times to create like a kind of a pad and I'm going to use my fingers as the block and I'm going to evenly and I say evenly a lot of people will probably just scratch away at something and that's it officially sanded no you've got to be thorough you've got to make sure every bit you actually do it until you see what you've done is how you want it to finish sort of thing so <laughs> okay right okay so the one on the foreground is now completely sanded okay it's completely smooth and when I um, come to buff this up it will now glaze like mad but one thing I want to point out is when you are doing the sanding you'll actually feel it change go from the rough texture you actually feel that under your paper because it's friction but when it gets to the smooth you actually feel the papers like more sucked towards the work because it's so flat now it's sort of and any high spots all of a sudden you'll feel them underneath your fingertips so you just got to work on those bits so you can actually feel when it's done when you're actually doing the work okay I remember when I was first starting to do paint jobs I always used to want to go straight from the 60 grit straight to the 2000 grit save all that labor but you just can't do it you have to be patient simply because if you was to say scratch it with something like 100 grit paper which leaves deep grooves and then you was to smooth the surface with 1000 grit paper you'd end up with a gloss with scratches in it but the way to do it is in stages so from 100 grit you'd go to 400 grit and that 400 grit would completely remove all the 100 grit scratches but leave 100 grit scratches behind 400 grit scratches behind then you could perhaps move to 800 grit which would then remove another layer of paint until it's a flat surface of just 800 grit scratches taking away all the 400 grit scratches and then you could move on to 1000 grit or 2000 grit and eventually you, the scratches would just get smaller, 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 smaller until you can't see them anymore so, but yeah, you can't cut corners, you've got to be very patient but one more thing be very very careful when you sand in the high high spots because it's very easy to expose the work underneath what you don't want to do is have them put all that paint on is end up with a few bowl patches so be ever so careful on the corners make sure you get the flat areas and just slightly go over the corners to make take off the, the high spots there okay ready for buffing the one in the foreground is sprayed as it comes out of the gun and it's got that orange peel distinctive texture. The one behind it has now been fully flatted. I've gone over it with 1200 grit paper and completely removed all the high spots leaving one flat surface behind. The next stage is to remove the scratches that I've created using the 1200 grit paper using a rubbing compound. Now this is teacup. Now one of the things about this, it will stain your paint if you just pour it straight onto the panel. So what you do is you apply it to the cloth first, just a little bit at a time. You put your fingers into the cloth, make a little pad with your fingertips again, just like you did with the sandpaper. Apply a small amount of teacup and then you rub it in circular motions and apply pressure. People, it's not just a case of wipe on, wipe off with this stuff. This is like a kind of sandpaper but in a liquid version you have to work it basically and the, by cr creating circular motions and applying pressure again you'll feel it's quite rough to start with as you first apply it but as you create the circles and go over the same area as you go along create like a pattern like that when you come back again it'll be smoother and each time you pass it it gets shinier shinier and shinier until you get to a point where it's just so shiny it's like glass Okay, so I'm going to go and do some buffing. This one is how it came out of the gun. You could just take it how it is and that will remove some of the high spots and give you a shiny surface. But it will of course have an orange peel texture. If you've got a bit of nice wet gloss on its final coat, obviously it won't be as bad as this one. The reason this one is so bumpy is because of the glow paint pigments are causing little tiny minute bumps and each layer of paint follows the same contours as the layer below because paint is so thin this side of course has just been tea cutted after being flatted and polished with 1200 grit 
if there's any places where you've missed, like you can just see on the tip there. Put some in there as well. You can just see a couple of places where I just need to go around with some 1200 grit and just remove a couple of the places where there's a few dimples still to get an ultra gloss finish but that's just a first going over you can go light with the fine tooth comb after you've done the bulk of the labour and got most of the surface shiny ok I can actually show you a little bit better with the black surface what I'm trying to achieve if you look closely you can actually see tiny little glossy bits the glossy bits are the remaining valleys ok and you can see it really clear around the label when I'm doing these labels I have to be ever so careful I don't scratch them off I've done it this side in between I went right up to every letter as you can see there's no glossy spots same at the front that's done it's just a couple of places now where I've just got to make it flat and it's ready to be bought ok what I've done this morning is I've taken some LEDs put them onto some wire and now they're going to go into the helmet and shine through that vent there coming out so that vent is obscured by this little thing and there's one with an LED already fitted ok so that's going to go there ok right we've installed the LEDs and bosh <laughs> a little wicker bum. Okay, the LEDs are just there poking through the vents. All the wiring is taped to the inside. Comes down to the end there, which is the electronics mechanism, which has come from a armband. As you can see, I've kept that because it's got its on off switch. With it still, can on flash. Press it again, constant. All right, perfect. So we've now got incorporated LEDs. Just got to put the middle back in, and we're ready. Right then, that is it. The finished article. You see the beautiful shine. That's why I brought it outside. It's a daylight. Even buffed the visor. Got matching grills. Got a little bonus. Sorry about the camera wobble guys, but yeah, that is it, the article complete. One question, do you like it? <laughs>